Hello everyone, John Myers here with the Kicker Global Training Department. We get a lot of questions on the tech line. Where do we get signal to run into an aftermarket amplifier and how do we know if it's the right signal? I've got a great example behind me. We have a 2015 Ford F-150 and we're going to show you how on any vehicle you can get a determination whether you have a full range signal, a band pass signal, high pass or low pass signal. And we're going to show you what equipment you need to do that and how to get that signal into that equipment. So let's go ahead and give this a test. To measure the frequency response to the output of your system, you're going to need an RTA. An RTA is a real-time analyzer, and what it will do is it'll show you the frequency response to the output. We have here two different examples. We've got a standalone audio control RTA, but if you're not fortunate enough to have one of these in your shop, you can download software for your laptop that'll do the same thing. A lot of times this software is free or at a very minimal cost. Either way you do it, you're gonna need to get signal into these RTA units, and this is what you're gonna need to do that. You're going to need the kicker KISS lock, K-I-S-L-O-C, a coil speaker wire that will reach to the vehicle, and on this particular unit we have banana jacks that will allow us to plug in our piercing test leads so we can accurately test and measure the frequency response at the amplifier. You'll also need an RCA cable to plug into the KISS lock that will terminate to a 3.5 millimeter jack. This will now plug in to the laptop's microphone input. If your laptop doesn't have a microphone input, you'll need some type of device to allow you to get signal into the USB input of your laptop computer. On this particular device, it uses a quarter inch jack down here, so we'll use a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter. Now we can plug our RCA into this. This will now feed sound directly into the USB of the laptop for our measurements. If you're fortunate enough to have an audio control RTA, we're going to use the quarter inch input for input 3. We'll plug in our quarter inch adapter and then plug our 3.5 millimeter to RCA plug in. Now we're ready to test. Now that we have our RTA all hooked up, let's go to the vehicle and measure that signal. Now remember, it could be coming from the factory amplifier or from the speaker. Let's go find out where we need to get that signal. Now we found the factory amplifier in this vehicle and we know what wires go to each speaker. If you don't know where the factory amplifier is and what the wire colors are, or if it even has a factory amplifier, do a little search on the internet or talk to your local dealer with that particular vehicle you're working on. Now let's go ahead and test the speaker to see what type of signal this amplifier is producing for each speaker. We know for a fact on this vehicle, the white and white with brown wires are the left front door speaker. It does not matter polarity since we're measuring an AC signal. We'll attach the test leads to each one of these wires then we can begin our test. If you don't know the wire colors of the factory amplifier, or if it even has a factory amplifier, another way to do it is to access any of the speakers you want to test for signal. It's very easy. Take the door panel off, access the wires to the speaker, and we'll literally just attach some test leads that will pierce the insulation of the wire without cutting the wire. So by attaching these leads, I can now measure the frequency response of this particular speaker so I know if it's going to give me the signal I want to tie into my amplifier. Now that all our test gear is hooked up to the speaker, we need to send it a signal. We need to send a pink noise signal, which is equal amounts of all frequency, which we've burned on this CD, into the factory radio, and now we can begin our test. Just remember, whenever possible, use a CD with pink noise. Don't try to stream it from a device because the device may not have a full range signal response. And once again, if you're going to Bluetooth, Bluetooth is not full range either. So we want the best, most accurate signal possible. That's why we're going to use a CD for this test. Now that we have the test equipment hooked up and everything's working properly, we see that we have a full range signal coming from these outputs from the factory amplifier. This signal would be adequate to run into any aftermarket amplifier, or even if you just wanted to add a subwoofer, which is low pass only. With the F-150, we were fortunate that we had a full range signal. We can use that signal for the input to an amplifier for just a subwoofer or as a full range input. But what if you don't have a full range signal? This is what a low pass, band pass, and high pass output look and sound like. If you need a full range frequency output and you don't have one, you can use the Kicker Sum 8 to sum all three of these curves together. This will give you a single pair of full range outputs to feed to any amplifier for any frequency response curve. 
The other advantage of the Sum 8, it's got an auxiliary input, so if we want to add an iPod or a video game player to this system, we can do that as well. Now, even if you have a crossover signal and it's adequate frequency response for what you're doing, you don't need a summing device. You can take the output of that factory crossed over system and go right into your aftermarket amplifier and you'll be absolutely thrilled with the result. Once again, this has been John with the Kicker Training Department. Thanks a lot and hope you guys rock on.